one of the things we do at the Logos Institute is study the patterns in crises. And we see that there are patterns that are completely repetitive. And that one of the disciplines of effective crisis management is to recognize patterns early and to be able to intervene early to change the pattern so that we change the outcome. And here are some of the more common patterns we find. One of the patterns we find is that organizations of any form, of any size, in any geographic market, organizations of any form, of any size, anywhere, who have the capacity to respond effectively in a crisis, both what they do and what they say, create for themselves a very powerful competitive advantage. But organizations that are incapable of responding effectively in a crisis put themselves at a formidable competitive disadvantage. And one of the things we find, one of the patterns we find, is that organizations that have the capacity to handle crises well tend to protect the things that they hold most dear, tend to protect the measures of competitive advantage that matter to them. So for example, organizations that handle crises well see their stock price perform far better than organizations that handle crises poorly. More about that in a moment. Organizations that handle crises well tend to protect their reputation far more powerfully than organizations that handle crises poorly. Organizations that handle crises well see their operations remain robust and stable compared to organizations that handle crises poorly, who see their operations become sluggish and inefficient. Organizations that handle crises well see employee morale remain high and employee productivity remain strong, certainly compared to organizations that handle crises poorly. Organizations that handle crises well see business relationships remain strong and on favorable terms compared to organizations that handle crises poorly, where business relationships fray where the terms of those relationships become quite onerous on the organization. Organizations that handle crises well see demand for their products and demand for their services remain high compared to organizations that handle crises poorly. Organizations that handle crises well maintain the active or the tacit support of public policymakers. Ideally, they're left alone by the public policymakers. But organizations that handle crises poorly become targets of opportunity for public policymakers, regulators, legislators, and others who see in their distress an opportunity to aggrandize themselves. But the most significant competitive advantage of all, regardless of form of organization, regardless of size, regardless of where that organization may be, the most powerful competitive advantage when companies and organizations handle their crises well is that they are able to maintain their strategic focus. They are able to continue to do the thing that they exist to do in the first place. Organizations that handle crises well are able to remain focused on delivering value to the stakeholders that matter to them, whether that value is in the form of profits to investors or services to their customers or products to their customers or rewarding jobs to their employees. Organizations that handle crises poorly fall into strategic drift and are unable to fulfill the basic elements of their mission. We see all of these measures of competitive advantage remain strong or get even better when organizations handle crises well. We see all of these measures of competitive advantage get worse because organizations that don't handle crises well don't protect these elements of competitive advantage. In a moment, we're going to look at stock price and the difference in stock price between well-handled crises and poorly handled crises. But I can tell you that here at New York University, we have graduate students working on quantifying all of these other measures of competitive advantage, including ways to maintain fundraising for NGOs and not-for-profit organizations ways to maintain desire for passengers to get back on an airplane when an airplane crash has happened or when really bad customer service experiences happened on an airplane. 
that we are quantifying these measures of competitive advantage and seeing the pattern continue to persist across forms of organization. Organizations that handle crises well thrive. Organizations that handle crises poorly struggle. Let's look at one example of that stuff. 19 years ago, the breakthrough work in stock price and crisis was done by the dean of the Templeton School of Business at Oxford University. Uh, and Professor Rory Knight, Dean Wright, White, Knight, Dean Knight, did a comprehensive study of giant multinational corporations from around the world that had suffered really difficult crises. And he divided them into those who handled the crises well and those who handled the crises poorly using criteria very similar to what we're doing in this course. And then he looked at their stock price for one year after the crisis. Now because he was looking at companies in different markets and at different times, he needed a way to normalize the comparison, to do an apples to apples comparison. So he used a statistical calculation called cumulative abnormal returns. That's a complicated way of saying something very simple. You look at the stock price. If the stock price moves and the market as a whole is moving in the same way, you assume the movement in the stock price is based on the market movement. So if the company stock falls 30%, but the stock market has fallen 30%, you assume that that has nothing to do with the company, you assume that that has something to do with the market. But if the company stock falls 30%, but the market remains the same, and the rest of the industry remains the same, and it's only that company that fell, then you assume that that difference in stock price is based on something happening. I validated that formula with Wharton economists and Stern economists, and they tell me that that is a valid way to calculate stock price. So here's what Professor Knight found. <clears throat> From the moment of crisis, when companies handled crises poorly, the stock fell on average 10% in the immediate aftermath of the crisis, remained below the pre-crisis close for an entire year after the crisis, and finished the year on average 15% below where they began on the day before the crisis. That's companies that handled crises now, some did much worse, some did not quite as bad, but on average, 15% below the stock. What about companies that handled crises well? They too fell in the immediate aftermath of the crisis, but only 4% compared to 10%. Their stock recovered to pre-crisis levels weeks after the initial crisis, and then remained above the pre-crisis level for the balance of the year and then finish the year on average 7% or above. Now some were much higher than 7%, some were not quite as high, but on average 7% or above. You put those two pieces of data together, the difference between effective and ineffective uh, crisis response just on stock price is 22% of the value of the company. When I'm with a CEO and I put this chart up on the wall, I have their undivided attention. When I'm with a board of directors, I have their undivided attention. This was done 19 years ago. It has been replicated ever since, and now Professor Knight has his own consulting firm that does nothing but track the metrics of competitive advantage in crisis, and he's now looking at what about pharmaceutical companies that have a crisis? What about industrial companies? What about computer companies? And he's seen that this pattern is consistent across forms of company and across geographic markets. When he figured this out, he tried to figure out why. Why did the stock go up when companies handled crises well? Why did the stock go down when companies handled crises poorly? There were a number of possible explanations, including they stopped selling products and they became less profitable. There are lots of possible explanations for this. But the more he looked into it, the more he talked to the actual investors who bought or sold the stock, here's what he ultimately concluded. He said the difference in stock price comes from what the crisis reveals about the skills of the management team that had not previously been understood. So investors now have an opportunity to see management in a new way 
and that management has an opportunity to demonstrate its skill or to demonstrate its lack of skill in an extreme situation. In other words, it's those leaders who step into the crisis and show that they're in control that get rewarded by the stock market. And it's those who hesitate and back away from the crisis that are punished by the stock market.